Okay, so let's get back to the uh, acid issue. This is something that deserves a detailed uh, discussion and uh, we'll do some even uh, sample calculations that help you understand this. Um, so this is the whole carbonic acid issue, H2CO3. Um, yeah, uh, it's a major source of uh, interaction between the metabolic and the respiratory. So, uh, and it goes both ways. So you can actually have, you know, I'm, I, we talked about a respiratory compensation to a metabolic acidosis. But it also goes the other way. If someone stops breathing as much and has a primary respiratory problem and has acid buildup, then they can metabolic uh, compensation. I help remove some of the extra acid. Metabolic uh, compensation, respiratory acidosis, or, or an alkalosis. It can go both. Uh, and how are all these things picked up and detected? Well, a lot of it is um, passive, but there's some very active neural detection. There are uh, receptors in the central nervous system that detect uh, acid. Uh, there are also uh, detectors for uh, oxygen. And a lot of this information gets integrated with the medulla, which are uh, pain neurons that uh, respiratory center that then send uh, information uh, to somatic motor neurons that control the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles and help regulate the strength. Uh, and depth of the Those then affect CO2. Okay, so pH is tightly regulated. It's usually about 7.4 plus or minus about 0.04. Uh, it's a little lower in cerebral spinal fluid. It's about 7.2, uh, but tight range. That gives you a low but important concentration. Of pain. But it's very highly uh, buffered. Uh, there are many things that are partially occupied by protons, and a little shift in one way or another will cause them to change their proton occupancy, and you'll have not much overall change in the pH of the blood, which is good. What are the buffers? Well, uh, water itself then is, of course, a, a buffer in the form of uh, HCO3. It's partially occupied, and uh, a small rise in protons uh, can actually lead to the creation of CO2 in water without a big change in, in pH. Also, hemoglobin, other uh, proteins, albumin, phosphates that are present in blood all act as buffers as well. Very heavily buffered. This uh, relationship, uh, important to keep in mind, you can actually, uh, it's called the Henderson, Henderson Hapkin. Uh, basically, the uh, association constant of uh, carbonic acid, that's the outcome of the, the product of the outcome of the reaction to the initial. You can solve for pH. Gives you this 6.1 plus the log of the ratio of HCO. This basically is pretty useful because this uh, lets you think about blood pH, partial pressure of CO2, CO3, and how they relate to each other. I would take a little time, think about what happens. Carbon dioxide goes up, if carbon dioxide goes down, think about which way mass action is going to push this reaction. What's that going to do to? to Think about uh, various kinds of bodily compensations. And let's talk about some examples. Let's talk about the respiratory acidosis and alkalosis as the response. We know that the carotid chemoreceptors uh, are very responsive. Uh, they can affect uh, gas. acid balance for that reason. Let's think about two primary respiratory problems, respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. Okay, respiratory acidosis. These are the sorts of diseases that can give rise to it. Basically, the common theme here is reduced inflammation of the lungs. Therefore, you're not blowing off enough CO2, pushing 
Schwarzschild-Schwarzschild and Hasselbach equation and that reaction in one direction, you're making more protons in the blood. Bronchitis, asthma, pneumonia, head injuries, in my opinion. Why would bronchitis do this? Bronchitis is going to give you a Bronchitis, lung inflammation, mucus production, barrier diffusion, okay, get less carbon dioxide blown off, and that's going to build up. What about asthma? Mucus there. What is asthma? So asthma is a, it looks like what's the most important process going on is constriction of the uh, pathways for airflow. That's reducing the ventilation, and so you get reduced gas exchange for that reason. Well, you know, people with asthma can also get into a state where they're, because they're having Difficulty that can create a hyperventilatory state uh, as a result where they take many shallow breaths and it, you can have this uh, overcompensation. Um, uh, that is not uncommon actually, and that can look a little bit like uh, anxiety. Pneumonia, similar to bronchitis, you've got infiltrates, you've got inflammation. Emphysema. What is what is emphysema? I hear a lot about it. What actually is it? So this so this is emphysema is actually a bit of a, a complex histological process. But the main issue is that you've got to uh, due to problems like uh, chronic smoking or chronic exposures, you have breakdown of the structural integrity overall of the lung, which would include alveoli, but also the uh, elastin fibers that help regulate its elasticity. And so you actually have a problem. The lung can't uh, expand fully. It actually looks like a little bit like asthma in some ways, even though the bronchi themselves are uh, not constricted in the way that they are in, in asthma. Uh, but because of the lung is not elastic, it, it can't uh, inflate as, as fully, and so that actually creates head injury. How's that going to happen? Yeah, so you could have pons medulla that would regulate your automatic regulation of blood flow. You can also have disruptions in your voluntary control as well. It affects the neural structures involved. Any gravis? How's that going to reduce your ventilation? Yeah, neural control, so, you know, it's a disease of the neuromuscular junctions, and, and so your muscles, your, you know, your muscles are going to be weaker, effectively. You're not going to, no matter how hard the nervous system is trying to, to drive them, uh, your inspiratory muscles, your diaphragm, your intercostals are going to be weaker. And so Alkalosis, flip side, a lot of things we talked about, if you're breathing too much, hyperventilation and anxiety or drug use. A lot of fever states, uh, inflammatory states, cytokines, and so on, you can end up getting elevated respiratory rate, rates, uh, fever-like asthma. We could talk about that. We talked about that compensation. Uh, head injury, you can get increased uh, respiration as well. Um, basic problem here is that increased ventilation leads to increased. 